Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, would everyone please rise? We are going to uh, welcome the Westchester County Police Ceremonial Unit to present the colors of our nation. Please join me now. Everyone, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance followed by the National Anthem. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Serena Taverona will please uh, join us in leading us with the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red Thank you, Serena. We're pleased to be able to present Bishop Veston Leek, United States Army veteran of Korean War, and he'll deliver our invocation. Most gracious God, our Father, as we come to you once again, we pause not only as a city, as a town, but as a nation to recognize families that have given their best lives that have surrendered when we ourselves walked in the room and lifted our hands and pledged our allegiance to this great democracy and to the flag of this country. We stand now together as family and friends that have come together and will always be family and will always be affected by the Gold Star members that have given so much and yet we're able to give not even enough to back to them. So dear God, as we stand, we pray that you hear our prayer. We pray that you hear our voices. We pray even, Father God, that you hear our hearts that are speaking out, that you would comfort the families, that you would comfort even now those military families. Bless us now and bless those that have come together to organize our officials of the county and 
that have paused and thought it not robbery to come and be with us on today. Blessed now, we pray in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Bishop. Everyone could be seated, please. Today is a uh, commemoration of millions of lives that have been changed since the inception of our nation and the loss of lives of our American patriots. It's also a reminder of the courage, sacrifice, and the heartache of loved ones left behind and their love for the family and the country of their loved ones. As parents and family members, there's nothing more profound than the hopes and dreams we have for our children and our siblings, including the hopes and dreams for fulfilling a life of service. Those hopes and dreams for their service don't end with a folded flag, a rifle salute, a gold star, but for families whose loved ones chose a life of military service, realizing the possibility of that ending is very, very real. Our heroes left us a legacy of a free and honest country so their loved ones can enjoy what they fought for. We honor them not just by ceremonies and words, but by living by their standards, believing in the inherent good nature of all people and taking care of those who take care of us. Today is a special day, as every day should be. We say to all our Gold Star moms and Gold Star families, thank you for your service. We know your sacrifice is indelible, and we promise never to forget it. Therefore, let us remain forever mindful of these heroes and pray that the Supreme Commander will always keep them in his eternal army. Today we salute you, and uh, we ask the Lord to bless us. God bless you. I'm going to call upon um, our county executive, George Latimer, my good friend and true patriot, someone that for years has proven himself to be someone who cares about everybody that takes care of us. And uh, I'll ask him to say a few words. George, please. Thank you very much, Ron. It is always uh, a great honor to be here and also a somber moment to be here. Uh, and I appreciated the words of uh, Bishop Leake, and I look forward to the words of Reverend Norman to try to put into perspective what we try to do uh, in a secular way. Lincoln at Gettysburg said that, that we cannot hollow this ground and our words won't be remembered. It's what they did here that matters, and I believe that applies when we're here to remember Gold Star mothers and Gold Star families. Let me first recognize that I'm joined by other members uh, who are in elected public office. You'll hear from a couple of them as we go along. Deputy County Executive Ken Jenkins is with us today. And we're joined by Congressman Mike Lawler. We have a number of members of the Westchester County Board of Legislators, although we did keep it below a majority to conduct business. Uh, Chairman Vedat Gashi is here. And he's joined by uh, legislators Nancy Barr, Margaret Kunzio, Judah Holstein, Erica Lang Pierce, and James Nolan. We're also joined by uh, the town supervisor of the town of Mount Pleasant, uh, the uh, turf in which we are in now, Carl Fulgenzi. Mr. Supervisor, thank you for being here. Uh, we also have a couple of members of our executive uh, team with the county government. The commissioner of the Department of Social Services, Leonard Towns, is here. And commissioner of the Department of Parks and Recreation, she shares this with Carl, uh, Kathy O'Connor. And I want to recognize one of the most prominent, uh, prominent veterans in Westchester County. He is a former county legislator, and he unfailingly is a participant in every one of these uh, appropriate events from East Chester, that town that he lives in, all the way across the county, my good friend Vito Pinto. And if I have missed anybody uh, who may be a late arriver, I'm sure Ron will catch him when he gets back up to the microphone. Um, very simply, 
we understand what the supreme sacrifice is when a person gives up their life in the, uh, uh, the uniform of the United States of America to defend our freedoms and to defend our allies. And what a sacrifice is, we talk about it all the time, what the, what the ultimate sacrifice is, and all of the sacrifice of the things that would have happened in their lives had they lived. It's particularly tragic because in wartime, the people that die generally are younger, and there's that much more of life that was ahead for them, which uh, they were not able to share. But this event, Gold Star Mothers, and we know there'll be some other uh, Gold Star Mother events in the, in the county, there's one in Yonkers coming up and some others, recognize the sacrifice that's made in this particular case by the mothers, and more generally by all of the other members of the family when they lose their loved one. The individual sacrifice is amplified by the sacrifice of a mother who gave birth to a child and now does not have that child there for the rest of her life. I imagine that in a home where there was a room for that child who's died in military service, it's preserved as it was during that child, that boy or girl's time in that home the pictures that are there, the, the, the sporting uh, equipment that was used, the, um, uh, the way the clothes are in the closet that they wore at various stages of their life. It remains as a reminder that something that was loved was here, but is now gone and never comes back. It has, as they do with the POW MIA empty table, there's a seat at that table that never is filled by the person that sacrificed. And who can appreciate that more than a mother? The mothers amongst us go home tonight and hug their children, all of their children, because they love them so much. The thought of losing any one of them is, is an inconceivable tragedy. And yet that is exactly what a gold mother has had to face. And there aren't words that can compensate them. There aren't uh, uh, things that, that tangibly bring the child back and, and, and we make whole again that which is permanently uh, a loss. But we do have these events because we try to say to the gold mom mothers and the gold star mothers and the gold star fathers and the gold star brothers and sisters and so forth, that we will never forget that sacrifice. That we as a nation, we as a county, we as individual people, we respect that sacrifice. And in the remembrance of that sacrifice, we bring back to life for that moment, that son or daughter that you lost. They were alive here today because we, their fellow residents, remember them. We know that our next speaker has had this exact experience. Uh, she has gone through the, the loss of a loved one, and she has been able to not only deal with the grief in her life, but become active as a Gold Star mother. And we see her coming to these events to bring that extra sense of personal connection to what happened. Hope Hollingsworth Coxum is a Gold Star mother of Army Sergeant Courtney Hollingsworth of Yonkers. She's one of us, as was Courtney. And uh, that sacrifice continues every day, and it is painful, and yet when she shares that sacrifice with us, she gives us uh, a gift, a gift of bringing Courtney back alive. Thank you so much, George. Um, Hope, if you're uh, ready, would you come up, please, and honor us with a few words? Good afternoon. As mentioned, my name is Hope Hollingsworth Coxum. I am the Gold Star Mothers President for the Yonkers Chapter. First and foremost, I'd like to thank you all for being here today, for taking out your time to be here. I appreciate you. Every year I ask myself, what will you say this year that will be different from the past years? How will you express and reflect and represent yourself as a Gold Star Mother? What words will you speak that will engage those in the audience? Those who are in attendance, mothers and fathers, and military personnel and individuals within earshot who have no idea of what a Gold Star Mother is. No idea of the efforts we put forth to make sure that our sons and daughters are never forgotten. A few years ago, I was called to attend an event in Long Island for Gold Star Mothers and asked to speak. The attire for a Gold Star Mother is 
white. So I went to a local department store and spoke with a salesperson telling her I was looking for something white to wear. She was the only salesperson in the store on this day. And there were no other customers. She escorted me to a section of the store where there was a sea of white attire. She was curious as to what the event was and why white. When I told her I was a gold star mother, she immediately smiled and extended her congratulations to me. She had no idea. And of course, I took no offense because again, she had no idea. In that moment, I realized it was not only my duty to explain to her what a gold star mother was, but the reason why we wear white. There are various explanations for the wearing of white that go beyond the mourning phase. For me, it symbolizes peace, innocence, sacrifice, and goodness, reflecting the grace and purity of our children who died young in service of their country. Yet the gold star mother meaning would be so much more to define. It's the how, the why, my soldier. It's so much more than the gold star on the service flag. It's more about perseverance, remembrance, the dog tags that hung around my neck and still do, the belonging to a group that ultimately get it, to a group where unleashed grief had or has no judgment, just support, patience, kindness, pride, and care. Of course, the saleswoman apologized profusely. Once I explained, tears streamed down her face, and I found myself consoling her, me, stoic and dignified with a great amount of grace because that is who we are. Proud, yes, sometimes broken. Yes, and sometimes inconsolable. Our pain deep and at times profound. But in those moments, we find some sort of solace, if you will. And she, the saleswoman, understood. And if ever it came a time, she now knew. Gold Star Mother's Day is a significant day for us. It's not a holiday. It is a day stirred with deep emotions and solemn words of respect. It is bittersweet yet courageous. And as Gold Star Mothers, it is our duty to represent soldiers like my son who enlisted without batting an eye, much less how it would make their mother feel. They were invincible, trained in the greatest military with an unwavering love of country. As Gold Star Mothers so often reminisce about our sons and daughters' courage, about their willingness to give their all while we are emblazoned in white, proudly but still shattered. Our goal and the representation of who we are speaks to our unwavering dedication and commitment to honor and support the family of fallen soldiers while promoting peace and goodwill. We volunteer when needed or requested. We raise funds to support various other organizations that are like-minded for homecomings and holiday events. We sit on boards that reflect the value and worth of a veteran. Yet, as well as stand here as a mother, as most mothers who are gold star mothers do, reminded that our sons and daughters were more than soldiers, more than what military life taught them or her, both mentally and physically. They were sons, daughters, soldiers, brothers, nephews, nieces, uncles, aunts, grandsons and granddaughters, and friends who taught us, who teach us the meaning of unconditional love of oneself and others. And every year as birthdays and anniversaries, holidays, Memorial Day, 9-11, Veterans Day, every day we will forever remember our heroes, proudly standing before you with the grace and fortitude left behind by each of them. 
We gave them life. They gave us strength and their bravery. And I've said this on so many occasions, and I'll probably say it on many more. Most never get to meet their soldiers. I raise mine. Thank you. God bless you, honey. God bless you, Hope. Uh, I have a special uh, privilege to uh, introduce a speaker for a few words, someone that uh, I admired for many, many years, still do, and uh, who works uh, on a daily basis as a service officer for the Westchester County Service Agency and uh, counsels people like Hope and others of her family and her uh, military uh, associates throughout the state of New York or throughout the, throughout the country for that matter. Someone I've really grown to admire and uh, I consider a hero. Uh, my good friend, uh, Army combat uh, veteran of the Vietnam conflict or war, Dan Griffin. Danny, please come up and say a few words. Thank you, Ron. <clears throat> Please join me in recognizing these mothers who have lost a loved one in service. Your courage and grace after such unimaginable loss is inspiring. Sending off a loved one so they can serve in combat must be a surreal experience. I suspect conflicting emotions of fear and pride are present in the minds of both service members and their families. Like any other send-off, you hold them tight, tell them you love them, watch them head out until they are no longer in sight. But what makes sending a loved one off to war very different is the all too real possibility that a uniformed military officer and a chaplain may show up at your doorstop to deliver devastating news. The harsh reality of war and military service in general is that not everyone will make it home. Let us honor the memory of these heroes and their mothers. It has been said that everyone dies twice, once when your body dies, and the second time is when people stop saying your name. We will never, never stop saying these 17 names. Before we forget, we have uh, from New Rochelle also our fire commissioner who is a veteran and who is uh, involved in almost all military affairs, uh, Sandy, uh, uh, Andy, where are you? Andy Sander. Thank you, Andy, for being here. Um, also, uh, with the world in chaos and uh, Congress debating uh, the future of our military right now, if those of you haven't heard yet, uh, there's been a uh, land incursion by the Israelis into uh, Lebanon, and uh, things don't look too bright right now, uh, putting a lot of our people in danger, uh, being deployed around different parts of the world. We don't know what's going to happen yet, but anyway, uh, I know that uh, there's a lot going on in Washington right now. I'm going to ask uh, our uh, good friend, Congressman Lawler, to come up and say a few words. Mike, please. Thank you, uh, Ron, and, and uh, Hope, thank you uh, for your courage, your strength, uh, and your grace. Uh, and thank you to all of our Gold Star mothers and families uh, for the sacrifice that they have made. As the Bible teaches us, greater love knows no man than this, and he laid down his life for his friends. Our Gold Star families understand that all too well. The 17 soldiers who lost their life in defense of our freedoms, in defense of our nation, in defense of our way of life, giving up their hopes, their dreams, their aspirations, so that all of us could continue to live ours. 
since 9-11. Uh, speaks volumes to the community in which we live. We are blessed to have men and women who are willing to take that cause, and serve a cause greater than their own self-interest, and willing to sacrifice of themselves in defense of our nation. Just a few weeks ago, Congress awarded the Congressional Gold Medal to 13 service members who died in the suicide bombing at Abbey Gate three years ago. It was an honor to be there as we presented the families and the Gold Star Mothers the Congressional Gold Medal in recognition of their sons and daughters' sacrifice. As Dan just pointed out, it's our responsibility as Americans, as a community, to remember those who made that ultimate sacrifice, to honor their service, to respect their families, especially their mothers, to hold them, to cherish them, to uplift them, and to make sure that we never forget that sacrifice that was made. One laying one's life down for their friends and for our nation. God bless our Gold Star families, and God bless our Gold Star mothers. Representing uh, the military community throughout Westchester County today, we're uh, privileged to be able to uh, acknowledge uh, the presence of Fred Wooding, who is our uh, commander of this county, uh, American Legion, and participates as a leader of all military affairs. Uh, Woody, thank you for being here. God bless you. Okay, before we uh, pay tribute to the service members uh, commemorated in our walkway, I'd like to call upon the Reverend uh, Norman, the director of the Yonkers Office of uh, Veterans Affairs and um, a Vietnam War era veteran, Marine Corps. And uh, if you'd give us the benediction, Reverend, I appreciate that. Thank you. Let us stand. As we bow our hearts. Heavenly Father, as we stand before you, we want to acknowledge the loss of those individuals who have made the ultimate sacrifice. We want to acknowledge the families who have given and who carry the burden, the loss, the hurt, we ask, O oh, gracious Father, that you would do as you do best, and that is to comfort the families, the loved ones. And we ask, God, that you would once again smile upon us as a nation, that we can continue to be that beacon of hope, that light to the world, that we can continue to be that standard bearer, in the, might, in the light of confusion and chaos in the world. We can only do what we can do with your blessings, your grace upon us. We understand that it is always a sacrifice. And may we as a nation arise to the challenge. May we arise as a family, as a community, to meet head on opposition. We ask that you would continue to strengthen us, bless us. And as you always do, protect us as a nation from the enemies from within and from those from without. As we commit this day in acknowledgement of those who made the ultimate sacrifice and gave their lives, we commit unto you and we ask, O oh God, that you will keep us. For you said all that we commit unto you, you're able to keep unto the appointed time. May you preserve us as a nation. This is our prayer. 
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Thank you, Reverend. I'd like to draw your attention now to our memorial walkway uh, where we remember those Westchester residents who have fallen in the line of duty since the attacks on uh, September 11th. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll read the names of uh, the fallen service members, and uh, they'll be saluted by the United States Air Force Master Sergeant Marvin McCray and Master Sergeant Timothy Horback. Uh, there'll be a hand salute followed uh, after we finish the, uh, the walkway. There'll be a hand salute followed by a rifle salute led by uh, Colonel Sam Dorenza, VFW, Post 2285. And then we will have taps. So if you remain standing, I'll begin to uh, read the names, and they will proceed from uh, station to station while we honor their memory and uh, pray, pray to the Lord. <clears throat> okay, if you can hear me, our, uh, our first... Uh, Representative Sergeant Anthony Lagman, Army and Marine Corps, Yonkers, New York. Specialist Kevin Cumming, Army, White Plains. Specialist Michael Arciola, Army, Elmsford, New York. Corporal David Ayella, Army, Pelham, New York. Private Robert White III, Army, Peekskill, New York. Corporal Efren Sanchez, Jr., Marine Corps, Port Chester, New York. Arra. Sergeant Anthony Caladine, Army and Marine Corps, Purchase, New York. Arra. Sergeant Couche, Army, Chappaqua, New York. Staff Sergeant Courtney Hollingsworth, Army, Yonkers, New York. Sergeant Merlin German, Army Marine Corps, Greenberg, New York. Arrgh. Lance Corporal John Merlone, Marine Corps, Yonkers, New York. Arrgh. Captain Eric A. Jones, Marine Corps, Pound Ridge, New York. Arra.
Specialist Gifford Hurt, Army, Yonkers, New York. Specialist David Fahey, Jr., Army, Yorktown Heights. Sergeant Edward G. Frank, Army, Yonkers, New York. Sergeant Joseph Lem, Air National Guard. Okay. That's all of our service officers who sacrificed since 9-11. We will now conclude with our rifle detail. That concludes our service. We want to thank you for attending. Say a prayer for our troops. Thank God for our Gold Star families. God bless everybody. <laughs>